Doves, Caught by the River on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington doing the button stuff. Actually becoming a little bit of a producer. He's Carl, yeah. He's a bit of work in, hasn't he? He's come up with a few games and um, we made him- he's getting a bit stressed when we shout at him because the mics don't work or it's hanging off, it was too hot in here, he couldn't get the uh, thing working last week. I mean- I, I- I- I really would throw this studio away and get a real one. Yeah. Well, I'd get one of those ones you can buy for, uh, for like, tenner from Argos. Argos, yeah, like Bon Tempe. You, my <laughs> first studio. My, yeah, my first, uh, With a little picture studio. of Carl on it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That'd be great- great pro product placement. What have you got this week for us, Carl? Because, we, again, we've put very little- we, we, I, I said I would put- I'm not hungover, but I've put nothing into it. Rick, have it, you done any work for this week's show? No, no. None whatsoever? No, 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 no. Okay, no, Carl, no. what have you got? What have you got? Quick. Keep them, they're, they're, it's five past, they're turning over already, they're finding other things. Oh, melon, there's right. Melon Sue, there's well, everything. Well, go on. We've got, um, after the success of last week, uh, Rockbusters. Okay. We're doing that again. <laughs> Sorry, uh, were you on the same show as us? <laughs> I thought it went alright last week. Yeah, yeah okay. good. Right, so we'll be doing that, got some nice prizes, which, uh, Oh, what prize, what other three films have you got? Have you got, have well, you got- Don't, 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 don't tell them yet, don't no, tell them. No, I'll tell you what, if it's Children of the Corn 2, then oh. can I, can I enter this competition? There you go. Come no, on, no, no, no. What is that? He's got oh. some, uh, different prizes. I, uh, maybe I should, uh, I should just tease the audience with those a bit later, Rick, because okay, there's yeah. some exciting stuff there. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Right, so I don't, wanna give, I don't wanna give too much away, Rick, but one of them is a copy of The Office on DVD. <laughs> yeah. Is anything uh, like maybe Burt Reynolds' a uh, straight-to-video <laughs> film? Are any of those in Sadly, there? Sadly, nothing quite as classy. Fist. Yeah. Right. Oh, so we've got, we've got that lot to give away. Yeah. We've yeah. got, um, go on. Educating, quick, quick. A, educating Ricky. Well, yeah, teacher brilliant. stuff. Because well, you, you taught me that people used to eat tomatoes off lead plates in the land of Narnia yeah, last week, which was good. Last week. Yeah. No, what Is it only tomatoes they eat off the lead plates, by the way? Why, why didn't they think other fruits and vegetables were poisonous? Bec no, it wasn't. It was because tomatoes had acid in them. That was the problem. You see, you don't, you don't, don't listen. listen, right? Well, lots of fruits have acid in them. Yeah, but they didn't eat them back then. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have bloody kiwi fruit and stuff. Don't they say then. bloody. You're a producer. Come on, you'll start, I start saying uh, shit and cock and stuff. You start saying bloody tits. Play, a, play the. Hang on, right? And go on. Play and the keep, keep him hooked, right? Yeah. We've still got a uh, song with a story in it. Yeah. You don't want to play Babushka, do you? He doesn't like the idea of Babushka. I told him that as a story. Yeah. And uh, he doesn't like it. A devil went down to Georgia, someone uh -huh. sent in. You know, he's looking for a soul to steal. Yeah. Doesn't like it. Won't you like that? Do you know the song? Not particularly. Right, it's a, it's a song about a lad who goes into a pub <laughs> on a, a normal night. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's in, uh, sort of the deep south of America, yeah. New Orleans, something like that. It's, yeah. you know, it, it's not the old Kent Road. Right, okay. Okay, go on. He goes into a pub, there's yeah. a devil in there, oh. he's getting a bit cocky, he's had a bit to drink and he's saying, do you want to uh, sort of gamble your soul away with me and we'll see who's best at playing the violin. Yeah. And, uh, I think the lad wins in the end, but it, it's not real enough. Where's the one? Oh. <laughs> what, what? Not like the shadow that got fed up and started pushing kids off bikes? Rick, I think you're referring to, to stuff that no one made sense of yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think right, we should okay, refer to okay, last let's, week. Let's, let's play Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It? And then we'll come back and we'll talk about that. Uh, and <laughs> I've come to the conclusion, Rick, we should never refer to stuff Carl said in the past because it would just take too long to explain. <laughs> okay, all right, that's fair enough. Right. Mock Turtles, can you dig it? <laughs> what I've done there is I've taken the title and I've done it like I'm talking to someone. Sure. Uh, sure. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello, and then. Carl Pilkington. So, Carl, how excited are you about uh, Ricky's celebrity boxing match? Are you <laughs> going to be there? <laughs> are you going to come along? Are you aware of this? You're aware of all this, aren't you? Yeah, I've heard about we it. Can't, we know. can't name the opponent, because um, oh, that should be a surprise. Oh, well, but anyway, it's, it's, for, it's for a charity, is it? It's a yeah, charity uh, yeah. boxing match. Yeah. And, um, I always wanted to beat someone up for charity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good cause. But uh, yeah. the thing about Ricky is, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, Carl, but Ricky's one of these men who, who, you know, he doesn't mind sort of, you know, making a fool of himself on the telly and being funny and stuff, but if people said to him, right, you can either be Britain's funniest man, universally agreed that you're the funniest man in Britain, or you could, like, beat some gangsters up in a pub, he would go that, oh, please, just let me beat people up in a pub, and like, and like, maybe like, maybe like an old man's being hassled, like, by some street youths, <laughs> and you come in and like, smash some <laughs> bottles over their heads and sort of against, sort it out. Against the odds, though. Against, against the odds, the yeah, odds. there's sure, about five sure, of them sure, against sure, you. Sure, 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 sure. So, cause sure. he's got this kind Get of- Get to the point, come on. Well, the point is, he quite likes the idea of being sort of macho, and you know what I mean, and kind of a tough guy, you know, cause he grew no, up in a, in a rough- No, I like boxing. Yeah, but you'd love the idea of people going, don't mess oh, with Ricky uh, Gervais. Uh, if someone said, don't mess with Ricky Gervais, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? <laughs> Never mess with Ricky Gervais, he will destroy you. <laughs> That's what you'd love. <laughs> <laughs> and, go on. Because you used to do karate, didn't you? You were a karate. Oh, I used to go, yeah, yeah. You, and yeah. you got, didn't you get all the way up to white belt? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I was one away from black, and then I stopped because oh, I had right. to start working. Nights. Oh yeah, one, See? one step away from black. I was it? Really? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, I was chatting to him last night in the pub because uh, obviously the boxing match is in about five weeks' time, I think, isn't it? Yeah. And well, um, yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> He, uh, was sat there, Carl. I don't know if you know this about Ricky, but, uh, he's taken to smoking cigars. No, I do! Are I'd you be, aware of this? I had the occasional one. He got a cigar, he got like a Monte Cristo out of <laughs> his pocket. It was ludicrous. <laughs> he looked like George Papard <laughs> for the A2 or something. It was <laughs> pathetic. And he was drinking Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying to him, but aren't you doing a boxing match soon? Hmm. And, um, I haven't started training yet. I'm starting training next week. You're not concerned that it's gonna, uh, gonna have an impact? Well, I mean, I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, like the, the boxers, they, you know, they normally put in some effort and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like training. years of training. Yeah, I mean, what you know, what getting I mean? up at five thirty. Yeah, yeah. Because you, as you reminded me of, um, of Frank Bruno, when he was preparing for Panto. <laughs> Not when he was- I don't think he even again. smoked then, did no. he, and drank? No. So I don't- uh, what's your thinking, Rick? I'm- cause I'm- cause you know you're gonna get your face pummeled. You know that- I mean, you're gonna- they're gonna destroy you. You haven't got a chance. That's why I left it this long, so I definitely lost my looks. But you haven't got a chance. You're having gonna, a laugh. Have you ever been ta- have you ever you're taken a, a punch to the is face? This, is, sorry, sorry, listen, sorry. But I'm genuinely is, concerned. Is this- is this sort of psychological training, because- No, it's not psychological training, it's a warning. <laughs> I've spoken to your <laughs> friends and your loved ones and they all agree we've got a petition going. <laughs> We're sending it to the BBC. Please do not let this man box. <laughs> uh, Anyone no. else, please. But you're no. just, they're gonna beat you. Uh, seriously, are you, I mean, have you ever had a punt, like a boxing glove in the face? No. I think you should let us punch you next week live on the show. You'd like that, wouldn't you? No, because I just, well, because you've got to get used to it. Because I think you're gonna either, um, cry, <laughs> just start crying in c uncontrollably, or just run away. You'll just run away. You'll just climb out the <laughs> ring and run off. Yeah, this is the same tactic that Ali used to get yeah. Foreman in Rumble exactly. in the Jungle. But I just- Oh I mean, dear. I, Cause I think a boxing glove, cause I know you're wearing like huge, aren't you wearing like huge kind of foam boxing No, gloves? we're not, no, I thought, no we're not. We're using dumb, uh, not a normal, um, uh, amateur ones. Are you wearing, are, are you wearing boxing gloves like those ones they used to have on Gladiators? <laughs> when everyone bites the dust? <laughs> <laughs> Those big foam gloves. Yeah. You neck, just slap each other neck in the braces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a big sumo suit. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, I should be okay. Do you get to, uh, you get some kind of head protection, do you? Do you yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's amateur. It's amateur. So it's, it's, it's amateur, you say? No, I mean- So it's, it's not, there's no, no title No, 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 I mean, um, I think that amateur is head guards, vest, and, um, 16 ounce gloves or something, as right. opposed to professional, which is no vest, bare chested. No, oh, right. maybe I can ask to fight bare chested because I'd quite like to show off my yeah, body. Yeah, if I, if I could. I think wrestling is really good for you. But I don't mean like those kind of like The Rock and people like that. I'm talking about Big Daddy, giant <laughs> yeah, that yeah. kind of. That would be good. Where you can just throw where, yourself where, on someone. Where they can sort of like be nearly dying, but then they can do a stomach butt. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stomach, stomach to butt. stomach. That's a good move, isn't it? In <laughs> British wrestling, I always like that one. <laughs> yeah, and I'd oh, be wrestling. Dear. You like, like two elephant seals fighting yeah. over a female. Is it true that you've spent, knowing you, you've spent more time deciding what tune you're gonna enter the ring to? I wanna come out to California by Tupac and Dr. Gray. I think that'd be really I good, I think that's it? embarrassing. And I'm gonna come out with loads of, um, little midgets to make me look really big. Sure, sure. I mean, I don't know what the BBC think of that, but yeah. it might be a- I don't know, I, 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 maybe we should take some suggestions as to songs that would be perhaps more appropriate. Okay. Um, I get knocked down, but I get up again. A fatty <laughs> bum bum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Play a record, Carl. It is gonna be- It's dissed me. It's gonna be It's pathetic. dissed me. Next yeah. week, take a- you take a punch of the jaw next week. <laughs> on air. <laughs> <laughs> Cheering breaks. Long distance. On XFM. 104.9. Mm -hmm. On the way in, mm -hmm. right, you know those little cars? They look like a little bubble car. They're modern ones. They look like half a car. The is, ones that, th is that like a smart car? Is that yeah. What they, is look that like, uh, they just look like a, uh, like, like a toy car and you can mm. park them sideways. There's only, is there only room for two people? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just like the half of the front of a Volkswagen just cut in half, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And, um, I saw one going on Oxford Street and it's a police car. <laughs> a real police car, right? Really? Yeah. And, I mean, I thought, well, th what happens if they have to chase someone? They couldn't, but I don't think that's the point. Because it was written on the side, it said something like, cleaner, something, uh, more efficient. So I think they're making the point that th we're cruising round in this car like we're on the beat and yeah. it's using less energy and stuff. Yeah. But the first thing I thought of, right, was that those two policemen, they must have been going, oh, Dutch Sarge, don't let us have that one. Can't we have the Granada? Yeah. I mean- It's uh, so embarrassing. It's I know, embarrassing. About, you know, police, they're, you know, they're doing, you know, yeah. But you've got to respect them. Yeah, you've of got course. Street yeah. toughs have but got to re respect exactly. them. Exactly. I just don't know if you have the, to. Well, get the up. only thing more embarrassing. What if you're really tall and you have to climb out of one and you're a yeah. copper? Are, th are there any policemen out there who have been 
uh, asked to drive one of these cars, if you're listening, do you think police listen to this? The only thing that would be more embarrassing is if you had to patrol on one of those bikes the goodies used to ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I think that would be <laughs> or more a, pathetic. A pogo stick? Yeah. It's yeah. so embarrassing. Or on roller skates. Yeah. But not like roller blades. Roller yeah. skates, those really old roller skates. Have you seen that you those- tie, That you tie on your socks. Yeah, have you seen those little bikes that look like clown bikes that the couriers use now? They're about a foot high. They're little- I saw a the other day on it. I, my head turned, yeah. But they're really just, bizarre. Just think yeah, they're that- They're the they fold up. Yeah. But think of policemen chasing you yeah. on that. Well, I always remember that even in America when I started seeing policemen riding bikes. It didn't seem to me, it seems- Oh, they're quite cool. They're the ones that go through mm. Central Park on the yeah, mountain bikes. Know, yeah, but they're that's it. really cool, isn't it? They, you know, they-, they It looks like they should be they delivering They whiz along at about 30 though. miles an hour and they can just- <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Because, like, on motorbikes, on a Harley <laughs> Davidson or whatever, I'm not messing with a cop, a chips- I mean, chips. Now, that's cool, yeah. coppers. Yeah, yeah. But people in a smart car or, uh, you know, know. that's- it is a bit embarrassing. But I suppose it is that or it's better than- Walking, you see. Next, we see them in those. Um, if you really want to be uh, kind of worried about the environment, th- you know those uh, little taxis you see that people pedal. <laughs> they pedal around Soho. And, uh, yeah, and when it's a, like a, a, a riot squad, there's four in the back. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? If if they need to arrest someone, yeah. Here we go. Go on. No, well, what do they do? Because they do only sit two, so do they have to flag a cab down or something for the it's for the point. criminal? We'll give what you the money. Do? Get a receipt. <laughs> t- take you back definitely to will go there. Yeah. yeah. You definitely will, because we've been caught this way before. <laughs> exactly. The no, last bloke, he just ran off. <laughs> no, I won't run off. Okay. okay. Well, I'll tell you what, um, uh, uh, Mr. Policeman, I'll take your car. Then I'll- th- Okay, go on then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely yeah. bring it back though. I will. I will. <laughs> well, it, it, th- uh, isn't there something in America where when they arrest someone in America, they don't take them back to the station and fill out all the forms, they just take them back to the station and then they go and fill the forms out in a- like a cafe or something, so they're still looking out. Yeah. Yeah, Carl told me that. They're what? So yeah. they're still on patrol, isn't Yeah, they? so they said they're doing all their paperwork, but they're in the, f- you know, a, a f- cafe window and they're looking out. Do you know, like, how they say in this country so much police time's wasted by having to go back to the office and filling out loads of forms? That sounds like some policeman going, yeah, I could get a lot more work done <laughs> yeah, if, if I was, I was in, the in a Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a lot of criminals in the pub and, uh, <laughs> if I would, yeah, you know, yeah. and I'll get to keep the receipts. Yeah, I mean, what's safest is if I didn't wear my uniform and yeah. probably got drunk. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With some mates. Or a lot, a lot happens in, you know, looking out my bedroom window, so if I was just like <laughs> snoozing, <laughs> yeah, if I was exactly. snoozing and when I heard a noise, I just pop, oh, look out, <laughs> oi, yeah. come here, come here. Yeah, apparently there's a lot of crime, uh, in Marbella over the next two weeks. <laughs> Pay me so to if there's a policeman listening who has to drive one of those cars, were you annoyed when your sergeant went- It is went the most embarrassing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. No, I think the pogo stick. Pogo stick, well, not. Oh, the, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the pogo stick. The, 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 the triple tandem. That's the triple great. Tandem. We should get that. <laughs> we should well, get well, when we do our road show. show. <laughs> Carl does all the pedalling. Yeah. I'm in the basket in the front. Hello, like Western Superman! <laughs> Play a record card, what have you got? <laughs> what do you want? But, um, Mark the Hoople? Oh, Mark the Hoople, yeah. Dug it out of the library. Yeah. It had one, it had one, it had greatest hits, which was enough, wasn't it? What yeah. What have you got for us, Rick? Roll away the stone, right? <laughs> Coldplay, The Scientist. Have you seen the video for that? No, but- Absolutely magnificent. Is it? It's brilliant. Oh, it's the one who's walking backwards yeah. in the woods. Oh, yes, I have, yeah. Absolutely yeah. extraordinary. Well I, I like all well their done videos. To Coldplay. I think they're great. Yeah. I still haven't worked out how they do that one with the, whether it's a filter, they just turn up the light, because it gets light. Through oh, the duration of the video. Along, yeah. Yeah. It's impressive, yeah. And it's slow as well, so he must have. No, I'd like him to win an award. I'd like him to win awards. I like yeah. Coldplay. Yeah, no, good um, luck. Rick, uh, can I just. Sorry, I don't mean to abuse our position again, but Bruce Springsteen's performing in London tomorrow night, yeah. and you remember I made an appeal to try and get a free ticket. Yeah. Well, I don't even mind paying. I, don't, I, I tried to pay, but. That's um, good of you. <laughs> Oh, I'm a kind no, of no, and I thought you were mean. No, go on, what are you gonna say? But you were gonna pay for ticket. I, I, you well, know, face value, I mean, you don't wanna be ripped off, do you? No, don't be crazy, you know, yeah. ideally half price. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been chasing kind of my tail, really. I just, I'm, I'm not going at the moment, I'm not going, and I'm desperate to see him, man. I mean, he's, you know, he's gonna do a great concert, it's mm. his only one in, in London. I can't believe that being on the radio, being on XFM, you know, the, the listenership's going up apparently, mm. I can't believe I can't get a ticket. I, I've asked Carl, he's done nothing, he's done nothing. No, 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 no Carl, had a very good point. Nothing. Carl, tell what you said when he was whinging no, in the break. No, but first of all, whilst you're moaning, you also asked in the week for a Badly Drawn Boy album. Yeah. You got in today. Yeah. There's one there for you. Well, yeah, yeah. but it's yin and yang, And it's Carl. like, yeah, but I don't, you know. Carl, what's Steve ever done for you? That's what you got to ask yourself. What has Steve ever done for you? Well, he took me to the BAFTAs. Yeah, but only because no one else would probably want to go with you. <gasps> <gasps> I can't believe that. What is I this? I do not believe that. Oh, Steve, 
I'm gonna stitch you up now, Carl. And it's in a nice way, and don't worry, it won't be too bad. He won't take it too bad. Carl sent me a little text message today. Right. Um, no, no, no. Oh, don't. what is this? Um, I would, right, okay. Okay. That you know I'm in a very frail mood at the moment. No, no, I'm you're like this, Bruce. This is funny, cos me, uh, me and him have been, like, sending, uh, trivia back and forth to each other. Which is another point, right? I sent him- oh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I thought he'd really be amazed with, um- Right, well, while right. you're fiddling, if you can make my dream come true, uh, to go and see Bruce Springsteen tomorrow, then give us a call on the usual yeah, number. Yeah, but like I said, Steve- What? Right, it's- it's- wouldn't be- right, you just said when the song was on, can't believe it, right, we work at XFM and I can't get tickets for Springsteen, right? Yeah. Mm. But we work in radio, we should get tickets. Mm. Right, now think Which of I'm the Which I'm willing to pay for. Yeah, mm. but think of the- yeah, but if it's sold out, it's sold out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but that's just something they say. Right, that's just what they say, is it? Right, so everybody on local radio stations say, do you know, I, I like that Bruce Springsteen, I, I want a free ticket, right? So another say- I tried to phone, I phoned for an hour and a half, I couldn't get through. Not long enough, I've put long the enough. hours in. Not long enough. Not long enough. What are you talking <laughs> about? I've put the hours in. No. Right? So another <laughs> 400 people turn up at the gig, they cram them all in, there's people being crushed, you know, they've paid the money early, they were up early that day when, when the phone lines were open, <laughs> whilst you were probably sleeping and that. So they're dedicated and they're the ones at the front getting crushed. <laughs> What? Would you mind that be crushed? happy if you were there getting crushed? I don't mind. I'll sit at the side of the stage and watch him. Yeah, but I don't mind. But everyone will say that then, and then what? before you know it, yeah. no one can see anything. No, you're Carl's on the right stage. on this one. Leave right, it. Yeah, I'll, Leave just read, it. right, I'm going to give you this. I'm now handing over my mobile phone to Steve to read the. You can see it's from Carl at the top, but just read it out as you scroll down. Just read it out loud. Is this a text message from? Yeah, this is a text message to me from Carl. Read it out. To see at night as well as an owl. You would need eyes the size of grapefruits if only Stephen could turn his head right round as well. I, Carl, I can't believe it. <laughs> what what upsets me most, Carl, right, is not the fact that you've been slagging me off behind my back. <laughs> it's the fact that you've got the cheek to come on here and moralise because you failed to get me tickets and make a dream come true. You've come on here trying to pass the buck and say that it's a health and safety problem when mm. in actual fact it's a Carl Pilkington problem. Look at that. See that? I've got it in a I can't, I'm devastated. I'm devastated. You I know, know I, I didn't. And then I didn't. Talk, let's buy a record. I just. I'm upset. I should have eaten this banana. Off What's the number? It's uh, 08700 800 1234. But if it's sold out, Steve, it's sold out. Oh. A bit of a classic, eh? REM. I bet if Ricky in. wanted to go, it'd be fine. I'm sure someone could sort it out then. Who? Oh, if Ricky Gervais wants to go, then I'm you can going. come. Are you? No. You want some tickets, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you two. Electrical Storm. That's great. That's great, I love that. I'm XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl, I want you to tell Steve what you told me in the week. <sighs> about right. the snake, about the anaconda, how to- Right, this is Carl's method. He's not scared of the anaconda, the thirty foot long biggest, scariest snake No, you were talking about stuff, weren't you, about in jungles and that, and animals- <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I remember reading hmm. about- Say if you're in the jungle and uh, and you get tired and you go to sleep, right? And you w and you sort of wake up and you feel something on your leg and you look down and it's an anaconda, right? Yes. And it's uh, it's swallowing your feet because they apparently they always go f from the feet up. Uh -huh. They never they never eat you from the head. So um, okay. Um, I, 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 shall, I, shall I save these points to the end? Cause make, that's a, make a list of the points. Because they, they always eat head first. Because the way the fur goes, where they, they have to take a capybara or even a rat, they, they take it from the but, head but first. But make, 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 sure. okay, make, make, make some notes. Okay, so that's wrong. We'll come back. Okay, to let's later. go on. So they always eat from the feet. Go on. <laughs> so, so they swallow in your feet, and <laughs> it's said on on the on the website, if you wake up and you see this anaconda doing that sort of eating away at your feet, don't panic. Um, don't and panic. I'm don't just writing this down. Don't okay. panic. Well done. Okay, go on. Don't, uh, don't try and kick it off. Okay. Just let it sort of swallow you. Mm -hmm. But only up to your knees. Okay. okay. Why, right. why not kick it off straight away? Cause it, uh... I think it sort of gets a bit angry, it starts thrashing about and it, oh. it can swallow faster, I think. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. I'm guessing okay. that bit. Okay. Uh, just put a question mark by that. Okay, there, pop a question mark next so, uh, to uh, yeah. eat so knees. Yeah, so it's up, eat it, knees. So eat it up to your knees. It's, yeah. it's up to your knees. Yeah, and then yeah, what yeah. you do is you yeah. get a knife. Yeah. Okay. And you cut. And how do you get a knife? Do you do, you, do you walk over to the kitchen? I was going to pop over. Get knife. Where's <laughs> that come from? Get well, you, knife. You always have a knife. Okay. Always have a knife. Of course you do. <laughs> Otherwise you're a fool. Always have a knife. Okay. okay. Well, eat, come on. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to go into a jungle, always have a knife. Okay. Always have a knife. Yeah. Simple. 
Um, could I just suggest something? You know, suppose you've got- you're wearing combat trousers, and the knife is actually in the- the- you know, those- the trousers by the knee, the sort of pocket by the knee. What happens then? You could- I suppose you could still reach in- <laughs> into the mouth, couldn't you? So anyway, you've got a knife. Let's well, say you've got a knife. Let's say you've fallen asleep, the anacondas, you're chewing your feet, you let it eat up to the knees, you've got a knife, what do you do then, Carl? Right. So it's up to your knees, and what you do, you get your knife that you got out of your pocket earlier, um, and you cut it at the mouth, right? Do you know, like, either side of the lips. Right. So you're sort of cutting it in half. Right, like a Chelsea and smile. And it can't- yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It can't do anything. Uh, it wasn't ready for that. It can't move about because it's got, like, your legs in its mouth. Uh-huh. Um, and peel it off and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, my- my main point, really, is this, Carl. Never will an anaconda or any constrictor, python, boa constrictor, uh, just start eating a sleeping man. <laughs> he will crush you to death first. That's why they're called constrictors. They're not called gobblers, are they? <laughs> or holy swallowers. They're called constrictors. Why would he start eating something? Is that how they t take down antelope? Just start chewing their leg? Oh, it's gone off. I'll tell you what, lads. They get together, the snakes got there and said, I'll tell you what, we're losing a lot of prey by just living at their ankles. They're running away. Let's crush them to death first so they can't move, then we can swallow them. You're a fool. So anyway, right, so uh, I was telling him this bit of information because we started a feature last week. Mm -hmm. Well, week before. So Sorry, Carl, first. can we just go back to the crushing you to death first? Yeah, but, well, I read it. He's won, he's won there. He's beating you there, Rick. Okay. Did I it say what to do if it starts crushing you to death first? No, 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 no. Did it say what to do if, so, supposing it, 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 it had this meeting, it had this meeting, and it, it started crushing you and you woke up and it was actually round your chest. And every time you <gasps> try to take a breath and breathe that a little bit, it just tightened its grip because it can feel that. What 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 do you do then? You uh, you sort of tighten yourself up anyway because oh. I've read about that. Yeah. If Go one on. does start wrapping around you, you sort of make yourself into a ball first of all, and it'll wrap around you. But it's all right because you're pre protecting your lungs so it can't crush you, and then you just sort of shout for help and right. you and you, oh, you shout you, shout for help with this thirty foot snake. <laughs> Don't know. Do, do, do you know how it works? It gets as tight as it can, it can feel as tight as- actually as tight as it can, right? With these huge, huge muscles, yeah. right? Yep. Right? When you <gasps> leave a bit of breath out, it tightens again. Don't- you won't be that out of breath, you haven't been running anywhere, so you can just go- What, and- and-, and when do you get the, the new mouthful of oxygen? Just- just breathe very slowly like you do- How? Do you know what breathing is? Do you know what breathing is? <laughs> it's extending your rib cage, right, intercostal muscles between the ribs, contract like that, Okay, making the rib cage expand, which pulls air in through. It's like a bellow. That you can't just breathe by via the mind. It's a physical process. It's your rib cage. <gasps> well, maybe, maybe I'm special, but I can do little breaths without my rib cage. Play a record, Steve. <laughs> You're special. Play a record. No, 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 no. You you can't take little breaths well, without moving your rib cage. Can I just give you the titles because we're running out of time? We've got a competition to do. Okay, all right. Let's just rib. leave the anaconda so discussion. That, Why don't you agree to disagree, and we'll <laughs> see who survives if, we, if you crash <laughs> land in the jungle? <laughs> right. So, right. Uh, what is this? What are you doing now? This is educating Ricky. Right? Oh, good. I'm going to look forward to this. Yeah, Three Ricky. topics that I teach you every week. Yeah. Okay. Now, obviously, um, I should just remind people, you normally summarise each of these in a kind of bullet point heading, which you tease us with, so yeah. what have you, uh, reduced them to this week? Right, we've got, um, Stocking, Aitken and Waterman. Stocking, <laughs> Aitken and Waterman. Good. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? <laughs> we've also got, uh, what else is it? It's not his, his vault. Yeah? It's not what? It's not his vault. Okay. Yeah. And we've also got get a lobe of this. Get a lobe of this. Yeah, Carl, they're genius. <laughs> Rick, are we choosing one of these after New Order? <laughs> oh, oh, Foo Fighters and all my life on XFM 104.9. I'm making debate with me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just before we do educating uh, Ricky, this is where Carl thinks he can give me something of interest and teach me something to take away. Last week, I found out that. Uh, Somewhere in a strange land, people thought tomatoes were poisonous because they ate them with lead. Um, things like that. Um, what was the other one you told me? Uh... What else was it last week? Uh, bit so, of worms. Cut yeah. me off. Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, sent him a text message. I was on the train, a bit bored, and, uh, I read in, I think it was Metro, scientists have found out that, um, 
uh, worms get stressed and they found out that, uh, the fat ones, um, didn't live as long. And when they checked the thin ones that lived longer, they found out they had a gene for de-stressing them. Right? Carl, what, do you remember what you said? No. You went, well that's stupid, isn't it? He said, did these other ones die of natural causes? <laughs> I went, yeah, he went, all right. Because it could be that the fat ones couldn't get off the pavement quick enough and got squashed. <laughs> So maybe the scientists go, yeah, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, they just come to think of it, they were flat as well as fat. The I think the reason that the uh, worms are getting stressed is because uh, people like Carl are cutting them in half to try and make two snakes. Yeah, yeah, two, two worms. Well, yeah, well. that's the concern. <laughs> he huh? said, he said they can't even commit suicide if they're stressed by cutting <laughs> their throat. <laughs> I also sent him um, what I thought was quite interesting that the scientists have found that um, the elephant hasn't got the best memory. The sea lion has, uh, right. based on. Uh, they've, they've got a sea lion and they, uh, got it back into the old, uh, laboratory ten years after it had taught it a simple trick and it could still do the trick. What did you say to that, Carl? I'd say they don't go up to much anyway, <laughs> so if you do teach it something it is gonna remember it. Sure. Cause it's got nothing else to do. Yeah. yeah. And then it also, I mean I like sea lions, they look nice and everything, but what do they do? What was that? <laughs> Sea lions? <laughs> yeah, what, what are they here for? It's another jellyfish, so, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like, it's there and people know about them, but what do they do? Mm. Yeah. What, does what do we do? do? What do we do, Carl? Well, what do we do? A, a cat, a cat, first, Steve said, is good for your heart. So you, you Why is it all geared to what's good for us? Well. <laughs> anyway. Educating Ricky. Ricky. Uh, good, we settled that then. Go on. <laughs> the titles that are, yeah. uh, meant to sort of pull you in. Yeah. We've got, if, uh, what, what, what was it? So, uh, stocking Aitken and Waterman. Yeah. You've got, it's not his vault. <laughs> and, uh, get a load of this. <laughs> get a load of this. So, uh, which pun do I pick first? Um, I think I'll go for, uh, get a load of this. Get a lobe of this. Yeah, get yeah. a lobe of this, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's a story about a girl who, uh, <laughs> she was deaf, right, for, for four years. And, um, it happened quite a bit back this. What year? Or was it, about, what, what, I think it was in, ages ago, was about, it? About, about, yeah, quite a bit back. Uh, she was deaf for about four years. Having an argument with her mum, it said, which I didn't quite understand, because mm. I don't know how they do that. Yeah. But she was having an argument, well, and a man pushed her against the wall, yeah. and she banged her head, and her hearing came back. Okay. Uh, was she wearing a Walkman, and it fell out? And she'd realise, oh, that's There's what. no explanation. There's no explanation? Well, why is that teaching me something right, then? so I knew you'd say this, <laughs> right? So I thought, right, I'll stick something on it. Do you know that bees are deaf? <laughs> no! No, you can't just, no! <laughs> no! If no. you ask someone something they don't the answer, they don't tell you something else. Just, I'll tell you something else then. I can't answer that, I'll tell you something else. Imagine that, if you asked a teacher. How do birds fly? Wow, if you're gonna do that, tallest building is, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> well, that, that was the equivalent, Carl, of running away when we <laughs> asked you a question. Yeah, the intellectual equivalent of going, look over there, there's a monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, what do you mean, what, she, okay, so, oh. So she, her hearing There's no explanation, back. there's no explanation, <laughs> or you don't know. Well, there isn't one, is there, really? It's a bit what, weird. But the only did thing- Did the doctors not look into it? No, I think they just said, oh, that's good. <laughs> But, so, <laughs> again, I don't- where did this information- is that- if you read this on is the that net, it? is that all they put there on the net? There was once a no. deaf woman who hit her head and she and could hear. Hearing came back. It was bizarre things about being deaf. Was there three, oh, like- yeah. was there I've three got that book, yeah, it's a good book, that. Was there three yeah. more pages you just couldn't be bothered to read off? Yeah. No, no, it was just a little bit and it Was said, there a little picture, a cartoon picture? No pictures, I just read going, it. Ow! Look, ow, if you I don't want to know, if you don't want to learn, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, uh, uh, um, it's not his vault. Let me have it's not his vault. You've got to save this. This has got to teach me something and be an interesting story. Right, it's not his vault. This fella. Yeah. Um, what year? Ages ago? times? In, I'd say in the 70s. Okay. Would you? <laughs> Any evidence for that? And, uh... Does he wear flares in the, uh, <laughs> in the story? Right. Is that it's your reason? No, it's, it's a bit like Yori Geller, this fella, right? Where oh. he's electric. He's electric. And, um... If he walks past the telly, the telly would fizz. Uh -huh. If he walked past the radio, it all goes like that. Ooh. His hair stuck up all the time. Ugh. And he'd be having a bath and everything would be alright and then the power would sort of switch on in his body and the electric in his body made him jump out of the bath. <laughs> so... <laughs> what do you mean, so? What is that so- what does that so mean? You've given us nothing. 
You've given us nothing. You'd have to at least give us the scientific explanation. Yeah. Well, electric eels have 400 volts in them. Oh, is this the running away again? <laughs> <laughs> what was that one called? Yeah, but they, they, they but it's there's not, a, it's not his vault. But there's a reason <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> not his vault. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his vault. I thought it was going to be something about I keeping think it we in should, safe. I think we should do these the other way round. <laughs> I think we should tell vault. us the story and then we'll hear the pun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his vault. <laughs> it's not his vault. Right, let's leave it. <laughs> Play a tune. <laughs> Educating <laughs> Ricky. We're not doing it. Uh, We're not doing it. No, we are. Oh. What, don't look at me like that. Oh, Carl, what? are you in a bad mood? The oh, Carl, I'm dreaming right. of you. Right, do the last one, do the last one. Carl's saying we're never doing this again, cos we don't appreciate it. Yeah, Carl, you don't know how good this feature is, mate. Right, last one. Yeah. Stocking Aitken and Waterman. Go on then, tell me about that one, what's that? What am I gonna learn from this? Right, well, do you know the saying, put a sock in it? <laughs> 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 I like it already. Do you know the saying? Yeah. Right, well, do you know where it comes from? I assume it's shut up, so I'll stuff your mouth with a sock to well, shut you up. years ago. Yeah. Sorry, am I right? Mm, no, not really. Ages ago. 1970s? Uh, 50s, okay. I'd say. Do you know the old, uh, <laughs> I'd say! Do you know the old gramophone? Yeah. With the, with the big horn on it? Yep. Yeah. Right, well, those stereos didn't have a volume control on them. Right? So they'd be listening oh, to so the Oh, so you'd put a sock in the And you'd put, mute. you'd put something like a sock. That's on. a real one, you see. That's taught me something. That's, that's good. That's yeah. excellent, Carl. That is the that is the only one that counts, like chewing the fat, if they're true. I'm assuming they are. It works, it's of interest. I haven't got it verified yet, but that is educating Ricky. That's brilliant. I will say the other two were more entertaining. So, you know, I do don't you see, do you understand the distinction though between that one and electrical man? <laughs> <laughs> and uh um <laughs> or I've hit me head I can hear you, mum. Yeah. <laughs> can you see the difference though? Or uh, are not, all, all not three really, because I, when I read all three, I took something away from all of them. What, what did you, you take, take away, away from the electrical two? man? I just thought, oh, imagine that, imagine how annoying <laughs> that would be. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. not education, is And it it's really? not taking anything no, but, away. Well, think about it, right, we take our lives for granted all the time, don't you? You get up in the morning, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll get up and walk for a shower. Some people can't walk, right? Yeah, yeah. This guy, you can't even have a, you know, I mean, it's nice to have a bath, isn't it, when you've got time on your hands yeah. and you can relax. This guy can't even do that. It might be alright for a bit, but he's not really enjoying it, cos at any moment, it could strike. Yeah. So, he can't even do that. He can't comb his hair, cos it keeps going a mess. Yeah. He can't watch <laughs> his Knocking you. No, <laughs> does he, does he fight crime? What does he do with his powers? Yeah. I think he just has to sit around, cos no one, he can't work with machinery. Right. Cos <laughs> it'll probably blow a fuse. Yeah, so he just sits around. Think about it, what can he do? Mm. What normal things can he do? Skateboarding. Going for long walks. Yeah. Put a wetsuit on. Well, he couldn't do that. Why? Ooh, water and electric. No, no, wetsuits aren't actually wet. <laughs> They're dry yeah, initially. But... Just put a whole wetsuit on and walk round with flippers and A wetsuit's not like a dinner jacket that's like <laughs> really wet. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. all, all I'm saying is think, do you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And, right. and what was and the other the, the, the girl, the girl death, <laughs> four <laughs> years, it's her head. Yeah. That's just, What uh, have you learned from that? What is that? Well, mm. imagine, imagine how happy you'd be. Remember that time when I, uh, <laughs> I nearly died when I choked on a Mr. Freeze pop? <laughs> <laughs> right, no, tell us that one again. No, I told you, didn't I? Tell us it, again. Yeah, but the people will remember it and then it's- They annoying. won't, they weren't listening, go on. What happened? It was ages ago when my mum and dad used to go out shopping on a Friday. 1970s? Get, get, get the food in. <laughs> get, get a week's load of food in the cupboard and that. And we'd, uh, you know, they'd come in with all the food. <laughs> And we'd all be like, oh god, you know, there's no food left on a Thursday, really, so we'd all be hungry on the Friday by the time the food got in. Mm. I love that! And that I'd they wouldn't like... need a, it's a, it's a, I imagine them like jackal puppies. Yeah. Just like, like, uh, uh, licking your parents' mouth for food so, as they come through the door. So they come in from the supermarket, they're emptying the box. Our kid had got some biscuits and what have you. <laughs> I, I, it's frenzy, uh, just a feeding frenzy, like pigeons. I grabbed the Mr. Freeze pop. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And knocked it back really quick, but it hasn't- it wasn't frozen, so I knocked it back so it was like a liquid and it went down the wrong way, right, yeah. and I was choking, right, and I nearly died. It, it must have been about- how long can you go before you die? A couple of minutes a day. Right, I reckon about a minute fifty. <laughs> right, I was- uh, <laughs> I was really close to dying. <laughs> How do you know you were close to dying? <laughs> me, uh, me, did your life flash before you? No, but I just was like, 
<laughs> There's loads of incidents of him eating pops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> Forty of those. What, Whatever, right? Anyway. What do you think you'd see <laughs> if your life flashed past you? What do you think? <laughs> which elements would stand out for you? Do you think? <laughs> what? what? Uh, Start now. Go back. Zoom. What do you remember? What's the first thing you remember? As a kid. Yeah. yeah. Just anything right. now. Being in the hall and having our dog licking me face. <laughs> Your earliest memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? Well, you. What's the next one? Oh, yeah. Right. Next oh, one's probably what? being at being at primary school with yeah. uh, Lindsay. Yeah. Was little, that your girlfriend? Well, a little friend who was a girl. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we used to have like tins with with letters in, and you'd have to write stuff. But anyway, what are we doing? <laughs> Right, so anyway. I'm intrigued by the right. dog that was licking your face. Well, bin that. <laughs> Can we work with that? Rock no, it's a great feature. <laughs> I just think you need to be a little bit more careful about what, what you consider oh, to be mics. education. Oh, I'm going funny. I fell right. over. All right, well, right. I'll. We'll work on it next week. Play a right. tune and. What have you oh. got for us? Because we've got a big competition. We've, we've come got on! To do the competition. We've, we've only got 20 yeah, well, cards. Don't worry quick, about then. it, Carl. Do play something, we'll come back with Rockbusters. What, what are we playing? Play? Let's play a bit of, uh, Tupac. Oh, that's what I'm coming out to, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Fight. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine it. Whack it up. Whack it up. Tupac, California Love. Yeah. And that's the big tune that, uh, Ricky will be coming out to when he has his celebrity boxing yeah. match. Yeah. We're all looking forward to that, yeah. Rick. Yeah. 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 Competition time, Carl? Oh, Carl's looking forward to this. He's just getting all stressed about his half hour. Like it, like Pete. Oh, go on. Go no, on, it's sorry. just, uh, we should have done this a lot earlier. Cause Why? Just keep him, it keeps him up to him. Right, uh, if you haven't heard the game before, I'll give you some initials, bit of a cryptic clue, and those initials and the cryptic clue makes up some band. Not, might not be an XFM band. But it's a band or a pop group or an artist or something. Yeah. Uh, it's on What's email. the feature called though? What's the feature called? It's called, called? Rockbusters. Rockbusters. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to, uh, will we do this on email? I think we ought to because you don't like taking calls from the public, do you? Well, he can't work the machine. No, <laughs> that's absolutely yeah. right. It's yeah. not that, it's just that then ev it's pretty fair for everyone. Anyone who's like got a computer, you mean? So it's open to anyone who's got, you know, a computer or a laptop at their disposal at this <laughs> precise moment. Anyway, uh, there's some oh. cracking prizes, Rick, you'll be pleased to know. That, oh, see, once again, uh, Carl has, uh, managed to collect together an arbitrary assortment of, uh, Just looking around, looking around the office. I, I mean, where did you get these from? Did you just, n did you, wh I mean, seriously, where did you get them from? Because it's right, such what, an arbitrary what, collection. What have we got there? I don't know what kind of a person would want these items. Right. <laughs> <Go> <laughs> it's on. such an arbitrary selection, I don't know what kind of a person you'd be. Read them out, <laughs> what have we got? Well, uh, there's a, a another, uh, XFM compilation, which obviously you've obviously nicked from somewhere in the office. Yeah, it's Fair a good, enough. good compilation remix uh, to the album. an album here, which is a promo album with two pigs on the front. I think it's the Smashing Punk Friends Live. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be yeah, certain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the album, didn't we give this one away last week? This well, is yeah. just a, an arbitrary compilation album. Again, one of those kind of, Is uh, that the actual one you didn't send, Carl? No, no. Oh, I've got, got a couple I've of them. I've got a job lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, oh, surprise, The Office oh. on DVD, right. um, which is ludicrous. <laughs> oh, I've then... seen it from here. What film? If it, like, listen, listen, uh, dear, dear XFM listener, it's half two. You know, it's just, uh, a bit windy out. You're probably gonna stay in this evening. Maybe do a bit of shopping. You, you got, and then uh, in a stands evening. Oh, what film would you really want? No, no, I mean, seriously, think if you could see one film, right? What would you want to DVD, see? DVD, one DVD, DVD, one of the big releases. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's, put them out of their misery, Steve. They'll be watching this tonight if they're a lucky winner. It's the movie Stigmata. <laughs> Stigmata with <laughs> Patricia Arquette and Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> um, oh, so look forward to that. That's great. That's the big one. That is brilliant. You're playing oh, for look at Carl's face. He's actually offended because he puts. He's the only one that puts any work into this show, and he's got s competitions. He's got educating Ricky Rockbuster. He's got, got the song with a story. He's got a song with a story to come that he's like <sighs> trapping. Oh, gone through him. I it's know. unbelievable. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, so you're playing for, uh, that for collection of arbitrary goodies, plus the big prize this week, Stigmata, featuring Gabriel Byrne. Oh, oh dear. Uh, about Go a woman on, who I think, okay. um, starts bleeding from the hands. It's a horror okay. film, I think. You'll have to be, uh, 18 or over I've to take it. part. I've seen it. It's not, it's not terrible. Sure. It's all, all right, but Is it better than, uh, Children of the Corn? <laughs> which was a big giveaway <laughs> last week. I haven't seen Children of the Corn. Go on, yeah. then. Right, so, uh, so Next week, Teen Wolf 2. <laughs> Go on. Here's, Go on. Here's the, uh, And Tony Banks's own <laughs> solo <laughs> <Yeah>. album, Bank <laughs> Statement. <laughs> Tony Banks, remember, is the, uh, uh musician uh, from the Much Love Genesis. But we've got that album to give away. Alright then. So, uh, 
Right. To so win those exclusive prizes. Yeah, yeah, Go on. Yeah, you've got to email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I saw a sellotape dispenser out in the, uh, uh, There's a pair of gloves, that I don't know who's out, but they're out there and they've been there for a week, so. A pair of well. gloves, a, a sellotape, a, a sellotape dispenser, uh, and Tony Banks' solo <laughs> album, <laughs> Bank <laughs> Statement. Yep. Okay, go on. Right, first one. Yeah. Initials JT. Initials right. JT? What's the Inis cryptic clue? Cryptic clue. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Hold on. Yeah? JT, and what's the clue again? At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Full of logs? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, who could it be? JT, at the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah, go on, right, next second one. one. There's three of them you gotta get. Letter is W. Yeah. Uh, the clue, that lad's got bad asthma. That lad has got I've bad asthma. I've got that asthma. one already. I've got that yeah. one already. W. Yeah. yeah. And okay. finally, the last one mm. is the letter C. Yeah. And, uh, the cryptic clue is um, Carl is one of these. <laughs> um, Mousetrap is that musical, isn't it? This isn't the clue, by the way. It is called Mousetrap, isn't it? There's not the, a musical. It's not a musical, musical but it's a, it's a right, whodunit right, sort of right, thing, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, fine. Um, <laughs> right, here's a clue. I saw that, uh, <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that on the real blockbusters. Yeah, mate. Bob Owen is going, oh, can we stop a minute? Oi, um, you with the nine teddy bears there. <laughs> Mouse up, that's a show, isn't it, in London, isn't it? I think so, Bob, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, here we go. Right, yeah, carry so, on. So, so the camera's back on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the letter is C, and yeah. the cryptic clue. Uh, I saw that mouse trap the other night, uh, but the heating in the, in the theatre was what? knackered. What? The heating, the heating in the theatre was knackered, right? Ruined it. Well, we've got that one already as well. Yeah. I mean, these are, th th are the first ones are hard, but the so, those two so are So, just a quick reminder, JT was the first one. At the moment, I'm in a river full of, uh, full of logs. Full of logs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second one, W, that lad's got bad asthma. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the last one, l uh, C, I saw that mouse trap the other night, but the, uh, the heating in the theatre was knackered. Sure. And, uh, ruined the whole thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk is the email address. You can win- I'm confused. Uh, various treats, logs, including I'm in a stigmata. I'm in a Gabriel river Burn. full of logs. Yeah. I'm in a river full of logs. Well, we'll do it in about 20 minutes. Yeah, you've got to stay tuned right. for the answers. It's not, it's not the quickest, so don't go rushing and sort of messing it up. Think about it. And it's random email anyway, so uh -huh. there's no rush, all right? And uh, if you want to email, um, you're welcome to say, please do not send me the prizes even if I win. <laughs> welcome to put that on there if you don't want that <laughs> junk in your house. Right. The reason we're, you know, we usually sort of play a record out of an ad break, don't we? Yeah. Carl is so concerned with his little competition, he hasn't got a record ready. Sure. Got one, got one, got one, got one. Okay. Sorry, Larry. Yeah. Do you want to do a quick recap? A uh, rec quick recap? Yeah, oh, yeah, I can't yeah, bother yeah. even to say it. <laughs> I'm really not, I'm not interested. I'm just not interested. Yeah, go on, Recap. quick. Still send your emails in. Uh, JT, it's some initials of a band, just in case you didn't hear it last week. If I said AK and an exploding pet, that would be Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Right? They know so, what a clue is. So, JT, at the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah. W, that lad's got bad asthma. And C, uh, I saw that mouse trap the other night. The heating wasn't working, it ruined the night. And, uh, yeah. yeah. That's it. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Some stuff. Stigmata. <laughs> <laughs> With Gabriel Bird. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft. Check the meaning. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant. On XFM 104.9. And Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington, who's uh, our producer. A, a proper producer now. Producer. No, but he's getting. It, but it's, it's more like it now, isn't it? Before he was someone who pressed the buttons. Then he was someone who pressed the buttons who we just made talk like mm. a. Uh, performing monkey. I hear and he's going to be lured away by the Today program on uh, Radio Four because <laughs> <laughs> they've, um, they, they've lost their news editor. I think. Educating <laughs> Ricky, quite topical. Absolutely, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Is well, it? so when you say topical, you this topical? this is uh, wh topical. Well, this happened ages ago. <laughs> yeah. Y your words, not mine. Have they got a, a Ricky who works there? We can look into that. Um, so, so this Cole's is a big set of competition. They've got to be given away. They've got to be given away. This um, is Rockbuster. We've uh, got, uh, obviously the big prize, Stigmata, this week. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna give the prize to, uh, to Ira, I think it's Ira or Ira, but she, she or he, uh, emailed in, uh, the right answers and then said if you could enclose the receipt for Stigmata, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> 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 uh, but I'm amazed by the number of responses we've had. And someone wants a copy of Tony Banks' uh, solo yeah. album, which I was mucking around, so we'd be better buy that in the week to give it away, because I think that would be an amazing prize to give away. If you well, just give the clues Do again. the clues and then just give the answer. Right. Right. Come on. What the answers are. Right, well, the one that everyone was struggling with was the first one. So yeah. I'll save that, so we'll go to the second one. W. Yeah. That lad's got bad asthma. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, what that was it? Weezer. Yeah. yeah. Good one, well done. Uh, the last one, uh, C, the clue was, uh, 
I saw that mouse trap the other day. Uh, the heating was knackered in the restaurant. Yeah. In the restaurant? In the, the theatre. Yeah. And uh, it ruined the night. Yeah. yeah. So it was a cold play, wasn't it? Yeah, that's a cold yeah. play. Yeah. And, uh, JT, uh, at the moment, I mean- No, I can't river. think of this one. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Well, I had to say there were some wrong answers. I, what was it again? It was Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Uh, we had some wrong answers that included Jethro Tull and James Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that relates to it. I'm annoyed at Lake yeah. when he clearly said river. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's the first thing that cropped up. Not I'm in some water full of logs at the moment. Uh, yeah, I'm in some water full of logs. But he actually had to say river, <laughs> so not Lake. That annoys me. I mean, I didn't get it. Fair enough. I should have worked it out. I should have tried to think like you. Get it. A lot of people obviously think like you, which is, right. which I'm, you know, worried about. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> James <laughs> Taylor is great. <laughs> JT, just someone, James Taylor. Just yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. So James Taylor works. Have we got a winner? Stevie's just going to randomly I did, pick I one. I did have a winner. I've just, um, I've just lost them. Oh. Needless to say, that lucky person. It won't be watching Stigmata tonight. Uh, just randomly get- it's, it's just a random. draw, by the way. It's not the it's first just, or anything. Okay, I'll just- I'll uh, just- I said to Carl in the break, I said, is the first one in? He went, no. I don't want a competition that relies on speed, because I don't want to be rushed. <laughs> okay, uh- So randomly click on just, someone- I'm just gonna randomly click on one. Go on. Uh, they've not- they've not put an address. Well, what oh. we can do, we can email back and say, send us your address. Well, of course you can. I think if they haven't put an address. Well, no, t- 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 okay, wait, hang on. All right, all right. Yeah. Chris Beaumont. Yeah, He's lucky Chris Beaumont as Chris one. Beaumont will be watching Stigmata tonight <laughs> with a club of haagen <laughs> if I'm not much mistaken. <laughs> so, so <laughs> He'll be loving it. Well done to Chris. Need his yeah. address. Right, right then. That's the end of that competition. Right. Can we play a record or something? Well, or... we're on to another feature. Oh, what is this? <laughs> this one is... <laughs> Rick, were you not at the planning meeting? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Go on. This is, uh, that song's got a good story in it. Oh, is this that- oh, God. So tell us the rules. Yeah. Right, the rule is that it's songs that we play on the show every week, and there's a lot of music out that they just keep saying the same I'll thing I'll just tell- what is it? What's the song, the song with the story this with week? A good story. What's the song with the story this week? Just say it. It's Gene Pitney, 24 Hours from Tulsa. Oh, well, I'm really sorry about this. If you're an XFM listener, we gotta listen to this. Go on. Well, do you know what it's about? Yeah, isn't he getting- trying to get back to his girlfriend? Yeah, he's been working away. Um, yeah. Lives in Tulsa. He's bit, he works quite far away. Right. And he's Would this back. save us having to listen to the song? Well, it's, it's always good to sort of hear the, hear the story it. before you hear the story. It's like it's like you <laughs> sure. know. You, you I read... like this before a film. Yeah. No, go on, you, go you on. might you might read the book before you see the film type thing. Yeah. So never in my case. <laughs> he's, he's working. He's working miles away. His missus is in, in Tulsa. He's driving back. Yeah. And he can't wait. He's only about 24 hours away, and he's, he's, he's about 24 hours away, yeah. and he, uh, he's a little bit tired on the way home. He's thinking, oh, I don't want to look a mess for when me missus see, sees me. Mm. So he says, uh, right, I'll, uh, stay at a motel, get some energy and that, you know, for mm. when I, uh, see her, have a Mutual shave. Bar. So he yeah. pulls over at a motel, yeah. and he's locking his car up, getting his suitcase out of the back. There's a woman in the car park. He's <sighs> like, oh, she's all right. She looks at him, he thinks- Sex FM 104.9. I don't think the suitcase in the boot is mentioned in the song. I think that's maybe a 12 inch mix or something, I've not heard that. <laughs> well basically, right? Oh, I don't remember- I'll play the record, for Christ's sake, let them listen to it! I don't remember him saying, cool, she looks all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah. 24 hours from Tulsa, Gene Pitney, song with a story. Hmm. You yeah. are quite upset by the, the lyrics of that song, aren't you? I just think it's a bit annoying that, um, <coughs> right, he, he loved this woman. Yeah. Um, everything's going fine, he's only 24 hours away from home, I don't know how, what sort of distance he's done, <laughs> but, but he can't wait to get home, <laughs> and all it took was some woman in the car park to sort of- <laughs> Give him the eye. <laughs> give her the eye. And every- all the- all the- all the, like, the good times he's had with his missus go out the window. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. That's the dangers of falling in love with a prostitute. <laughs> Oh, God. What I like about it I, though is the fact that he's writing this to his ex girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. It's like talking about rubbing it in. <laughs> yeah. I was kissing her and getting off with her. We were having a walk. It didn't time. take as long as Carl did explain it though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but did, did you hear the very end? Because yeah. he's a loser because he said, and he can never go home again. Yeah. yeah. So even though he's got this new girlfriend and that. Yeah. And can't see his old mate. He has falling in love with can't it. Can't see his old mates anymore, he said. Can't see his old mates anymore. Yeah. It's I say, a sober I, and listen. I I you, song, <laughs> next time you stop at the Granada services, <laughs> <laughs> on the way back from, you know, Swansea, I'd be careful. You, there was a song that was a bit like that by Jim Reeves, um, probably at about the same time a little bit before, right? It was just called, um, 
just a hundred miles from Mary Ann, right? Mm. And, um, it was him and his horse going through the snow, and he right. was just telling He's stopped at a little chef. <laughs> no, yeah, he's fancied another donkey. <laughs> yeah. No, but, um, it's really sad. It used to make me cry when I was little, cause he got there, right, and he, he wouldn't leave old Ben, the horse, mm. and then they, and he dies in the snow, and then so he dies in the snow. <laughs> he's gone again, he's gone again. <laughs> that, I get the same way teary-eyed with, uh, two little boys. Yeah. No, I don't like that. Why not? It's just... You think I'd leave you dying when there's room on this horse for two? Climb up here, Jack, we'll soon be flying back to the rank so blue. It was just like when they were playing with a little horse's head, uh, when they were little, and he was a soldier and he helped him and he returned the favour in a war, which to me is a bigger favour <laughs> than just letting him have a go on a hobby horse, but, uh, yeah. a lot, lot, lot braver, if you, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, last number one of the sixties as well. Christmas yeah. 1969. And it's, of course, based on truth, that it's actually, that's a history lesson right there. It is, based on it fact. Is. It's yeah. a famous, famous person. I think it was Cromwell. Winston Churchill and Cromwell. Yeah, it's Winston Churchill and Cromwell. Cromwell. Cromwell and Winston Churchill. <laughs> yeah, they were both lived ages ago, so they <laughs> lived at the same time. Yeah. Literally ages ago, so they lived at the same time. Yeah. Well, that's it then. Is it? Yeah. Were you listening to anything we were saying then, Carl? Did Did you understand any of that, that me and Steve were just chatting just about then? You that Rolf Harris, uh, did a good song about right. someone who's got to carry on a horse. Right, and what, what, what was about the stuff about Cromwell and Winston? Oh. You, what do you think that was about? I, I missed that. We're doing humour. We're doing a little bit of humour. It was a satire on you saying ages, not being specific. Do you do do, do you like that stuff we do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it then. <laughs> <laughs> like just a cat looking out a window at a dead m mouse or something. <laughs> you can't. You can go come here, and it's just looking at the mouse it could eat. You you want to you want to press the buttons and finish, don't you? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Play a record or no? That's it. It's ads and that's it. Okay. Good, Great. Goodbye. Well, what a wonderful ending. <laughs> 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 that was the way we went over the back.